Hello, hola, bonjour. Welcome to our channel. Today we're talking about consecration. And the Lord had led us to talk about this just because it's something that a lot of people have not really understood within the body of Christ. So the Holy Spirit gave us four major points. And thank you for joining our conversation. So what does consecration mean? Well, this, this topic is a very critical topic um, as a believer, number one, and it is something that God had to reveal to me the importance of how we really need to take this seriously if you want to be a vessel and you want to be someone who God can use. First of all, I want to just give like a simple example of what consecration is because we're going to get into an in-depth and not too deep depth teaching, but I want to get into some scriptures to enlighten us on really what consecration is from the scriptures. So, what does it mean for someone or an, a thing to be consecrated? So, in simple terms, it simply means separated onto something, separated for a specific use. And you know, sometimes, like one thing about me, or when I used to, when I grew up back in Cameroon, is that we have like different type of glasses. Mm -hmm. So there's like glasses when there's like celebration, there's not the same kind of cups that we drink when we're at home. And then there's also different kind of glasses when like, you know, uh, people come that are invited at home and they kind of just, <clears throat> when people are being invited at home to drink, they don't drink from the same glass that we drink from home. So that classification is already to show you that there's some glasses that are separated just for celebrations. There are glasses that are separated just for specific people. In fact, there are even some glasses that are just separated just for parents or just to honor them. So that's a little bit about the simple term I wanted to get into. Now to get into the scriptures because the Bible really goes in depth on this. Next to this chapter 40, I will be a little bit fast in the reading, but I want you to pay attention. So in verse one, it says, then the Lord said to Moses, set up the tabernacle on the first day of the new year, Place the Ark of the Covenant inside and install the inner curtain to enclose the Ark within the most holy place. Then bring in the table and arrange the utensils on it and bring in the lampstand and set up the lamps. Now I'm getting into the point of emphasis, so pay attention. It says, place the gold incense in front of the Ark of the Covenant, then hang the curtain at the entrance of the tabernacle. Place the altar of burnt offering in the front of the tabernacle entrance. Set the wash basin between the tabernacle and the altar and fill in with water. Then set up the courtyard around the outside of the tent and hang the curtain for the courtyard entrance. So basically all of this is just God showing us the setup of the tabernacle. And a good thing is that you will be, if you understand how the tabernacle works, is that there is the outer court, the inner court, and the most holy place and god is just at this time the tabernacle was already constructed and god was basically instructing moses to separate the items the utensils that have been created and dedicated for him so that it can be only used for the works of god and this is where we're getting into it. so verse 9 is where my emphasis is starting it says take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle so you see god anointed the tabernacle and then he said, and all its furnishings to consecrate them and make them holy. So you see, when you consecrate an item, you are separating the item for a specific use. I mean, you have to understand, the first thing is, when you look at the word holy, what does holy mean even? Like when you look at holy, the angels are singing holy, holy, holy. You see, holy comes from the Hebrew word kadosh. And kadosh actually means separated. It means God is in his own class. God is, is so unique that you can't really put him in a frame. You can't really put him in a box. And that's why the angels don't stop because every day there's a new dimension of God that they never seen before. And that's why they can't stop saying, holy, holy, holy. And God wants us to be holy because he is holy. God cannot condone anything other than what he is himself so that's why consecration is a very very critical and important topic that god wants us to talk about 
to continue here, you see that in verse 10, God says, anoint the altar of burnt offering and its utensils to consecrate them. You see, there's a relationship between the anointing and consecration. So when God puts his anointing on someone, it means he has that person has consecrated themselves so that they can be used just for God. So you see the relationship between consecration and the anointing. Because it's not something that is cheap. So God is telling Moses, anoint this. And then verse 11, he says, next, anoint the wash basin and it, is, and it stand to consecrate them. And verse 12, he said, present Aaron and his sons at the entrance of the tabernacle and wash them with water. You see, the Bible says when we are washed in the water, which refers to the word of God, when the, the Lord renews us with the new birth of the spirit. And you see in verse 13 here, he said, dress Aaron with the sacred garments and anoint him. I mean, you, you got you to gotta really pay attention. Like God is saying, Moses, anoint Aaron and consecrating him to serve me as a priest. So you can't be a priest for God. You can't be doing work for God if you are not consecrated. In fact, take a moment and think for yourself. Would you want to use yourself the way you are? Would you want to, you know, use yourself the way you are? Do you think you would be happy about it? Switch positions with God. Because you really know who you are. You really know who you are. And if you really take time to think about it, you're like, well, God, I want you to use me. God, I want you to use me mightily. Do this, do that. But deep down, you know you're not doing enough. Deep down, you really know that you're not really taking that time to consecrate yourself. You're not taking that time to separate yourself. You're not taking that time so that you, you, you're spending time with God. You're not spending time praying. You're not spending time reading the Word. And when you don't do these things, how do you want God to use you? How do you want God to anoint you to do the work that He wants you to do in your life? So you have to understand that consecration is one of the most important things as a believer in Jesus Christ. If you want to be able to fulfill the destiny that God has called you to do in this life, you must consecrate yourself. And there's various steps and requirements and levels. So this is really a very important thing that the Lord really laid on my hand. And I wanted to just establish that for now. I don't know. Um, so that's a little bit about what is consecration and the importance and the relationship between consecration and the anointing so maybe we can move it on the next point that you have so i mean you pretty much like touched a little bit on like all four points wow. i mean however the anointing chooses to flow right um something that i would definitely add you did an excellent job of I'm um, describing consecration, glory to God. And something that God put on my heart when you were describing about the tabernacle just reminded me about the book of Exodus and just how the Levites were consecrated onto God. Mm -hmm. They associated themselves with just any other Israelite. They had to make sure that they followed the laws that the Lord had given them. They couldn't live among anyone else. And they had, like, the Lord pretty much had them separated so that they would be just for him it's true it's true priest so the lord today he calls all of us to be his priest we're all priests we all have the privilege of being a priest and what that means is that we all have the privilege to have that communion with god but to be able to have that communion with god and be able to hear from him consistently being able to have connection with him we need to be consecrated because when we have so much clutter we have so much dirt, so much filth. Yeah. And from I'm talking about sin. I'm talking about thoughts. I'm talking I'm talking about just things that we associate ourselves with. And we'll get more into that throughout the video. But something that God's really putting on my heart, specifically about consecration, was just that if you really want to follow him, you must be consecrated. If you want to hear his voice, yes. if you want to hear the voice no of Jesus Christ. Go around it. If you want to hear his voice, and his voice is so important. Now you can read the word of God and live a life full of sin. And you won't be able to get the revelation from the Bible because the Bible is alive. You need to have consecra consecration through the Holy Spirit so that you can be able to have an open heart to receive the counsel that the Bible even reveals. Or even to believe, or even to believe the things that the Bible um, speaks about. Because if you're consistently reading something and you're not conforming to what you're reading, you're not in, you're not walking in belief. 
a lot of people in the church nowadays are not in Christ. A lot of you can be in the church but not in Christ. Mm-hmm. And that's something that we're not gonna get into today. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a lo- that's another a loaded topic. topic. For time. <laughs> that's definitely a loaded topic. But something that count that um I feel like God just put on my heart right now. So we're gonna move on to the second point. Yes, definitely, definitely. We t- second point is why is consecration important? Now we've talked like Bertold already talked about it. I've already um, talked a little, touched a little bit about it. But something that I really, a point I really want to drive home is that without consecration, you are susceptible to attack as a believer. We are in a war. Every day is a war. As you wake up, even in your sleep, there is war going on. If you don't wake up to the call that the Lord has for you through adapting to the things that the Lord is telling you to do by changing your lifestyle, by adapting to the nature of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Because the Holy, once you receive Christ in your life, the Holy Spirit reveals Himself. And He speaks to you. He can speak to you through many different ways. And it becomes so much more difficult to hear from Him when there's a bunch of other clutter. Mm-hmm. Whether it's watching Netflix, for binging for hours, mm-hmm. listening to secular music, whether it's Beyonce, Rihanna, however... Um, artist that's just not promoting God. The, God because if you're not filling yourself up with the word of God if you're not filling yourself up with God's worship you're filling up yourself up with the worship of the world mm-hmm. which is worship to Satan mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's true. if you're not becoming more like Christ you're becoming more like Satan and a lot of people want to say oh no you know I'm trying to do my own thing not really about doing something bad I'm trying to do my own thing but if you ever understand Satan's whole agenda is about worshiping self. Mm, it's true. That's why he fell because of pride. He worshiped himself. He wanted the other angels to worship him. Yeah. That's self. And if we're saying that we want to live a life for my, I just want to live me, live a life for myself, that's do true. the things that I want to do for myself. That's deep. That's deep. That's me. That's me worshiping into the footsteps that Satan wants me to follow in. Mm. You have to understand when Adam and Eve sinned by eating that fruit. Their DNA changed and they became part nature of Satan, part mm-hmm. nature of God. Because the fruit of good and evil consists of that rebellion that Satan carried. That's why he was so excited when he got the chance to corrupt mankind by having them both eat that fruit. So now what we talk about in um, throughout the New Testament as the flesh, the flesh is just that wicked nature that we all have. But the Holy Spirit... This is, this is why I love the Holy Spirit. He just comes in and he makes things so much more easy for you. Oh, I, can, yeah. I cannot live a consecrated life on my own. Oh, yes. And, yes. That, and that's how you become self-righteous and religious. When you're just trying to follow a bunch of rules. Now, you have to start from somewhere by reading the word. But if you can think that you can just do these things on your own, that's not God. No, that's you trying to prove something to yourself. Mm. You're not made worthy just because of who you are. You're worthy because of Jesus Christ and his blood. Wow. You're worthy because of Jesus Christ and his blood. So to be able to walk in the call God has for you, you have to submit to the word of God, which then opens that door for the Holy Spirit to speak to your spirit. Now the Holy Spirit can speak to you through many different ways. You can hear that soft, still voice within you. And you might think it's your conscience, but that's the Holy Spirit speaking through that. It could be through an emotion. You you might end up, for example, you could be in a mall and they're just blasting this horrible type of music. And we keep on emphasizing music just because it's so spiritual. It's a big aspect of consecration. Mm-hmm. It's a huge aspect of consecration. I mean, in fact, I, I, wanna, I don't want to interrupt you, but you're saying really a great point because one thing that was you were speaking, the Lord was putting on my heart is that you can't consecrate yourself outside of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of immorality is the spirit that has the highest level of authority in terms of in our generation, honestly. In fact, in any generation, because you can see from Sodom and Gomorrah, and you can just see from how uh, when the apostles were there yeah. and what they were talking about. But you can see someone who's hooked up on pornography, and they will say, "Okay, well, I want to quit pornography," and they will say, "All right, well, this week." I only, I'm going to make sure I don't masturbate, you know, I'm going to make sure that I'm not doing it anymore. But you realize that if you want to do it in your own strength, you will quickly be humbled. 
because at some point you'll be like okay well i'm seven day good you know people want to stop vaping <laughs> stop smoking they say oh yeah you know i'm 10 days good 20 days good but what you're not realizing is that it's an illusion you can't fight something spiritual by your own flesh no. by your own means because there's nothing good in us you see paul said there is nothing good in my flesh so we have to understand that there is nothing good in us you're a bad person and we need to come to that place of humility to understand that it is only God who can make us good. You see, it is the person who lives inside of us who is good. You see, when you see someone doing good things, it is not really the person. It is the expression of the Holy Spirit inside that person that is wow. manifesting. That's good. So that's really what I want you to understand, that you need to stop thinking that you need to prove yourself because you're not worthy, like she said. Like, you can never make it. No flesh can boast before God. Nope. And God did this on purpose so that he can humble us and we can run to him and realize like we need help. We are a bag of infirmities and we need desperate help. And I wanted to continue on that aspect that you were really mentioning. Like you really need to spend that time in asking the Holy Spirit to help you because the, Jesus said, I'm sending you the helper. You see, it's like hiring someone to do a job and then you're like, oh, I don't know what I need you to do. What, the Holy Spirit has a function. One of the main things he has come to do is to help. And if you don't want to acknowledge that you need help, he's going to stand there and watch you try to do it on your own. And you got to understand that if you don't ask him, he's not going to do it. Because the Father said, if you don't ask, you won't receive. So there are principles in the Word of God that you must apply. Stop saying, oh, God will do it for me. Oh, God is my dad and God is my this. No, you have to start being intentional. Because God has already made everything available to us. And you need to make that decision that I want to make a change. In fact, something that I learned from a great man of God is that he said, great people don't just suddenly appear. And, and that was really powerful to me because sometimes some people think that you get to a certain place by chance. Nope. Like it's like you have to understand that people know something. They understand certain things and there are things that they're doing. So don't just say, oh, you know, my life with God is good. Things are just going to get better. But you don't want to be intentional about it. You have to be. So that's really one of the things I really want to emphasize, like you said, like the understanding of needing the help of the Holy Spirit. Because you can't really boast about it. We can't really do this on our own. And you're going to fail. And what do I mean by fail? I'm bringing back the example of pornography again because I know many of our, of our kids today, many of the youth are struggling with lust, pornography, masturbation. All these things are so, so, so dangerous for us in fact there are specific sins in their own category and we will talk about that another time but what i'm really trying to make you understand is that if you want to be freed from this bondage of sin you really have to come to a place of humility and to break free from this power you need a higher power because there's no higher power than the power of god which is the holy spirit and you know you have to understand that that you need to ask him, but you also need to apply certain principles in terms of him being able to work through you because this is going to be a process. You want to fall sometimes, but the Bible says the righteous man falls seven times, Amen. but he stands back up. Amen. Stop looking down on yourself and stand up because God is still, if you are alive today and if you woke up this morning, it means that your journey is not over. Amen. God put his breath in your lungs today because he knew that he has something that he wants you to do on this earth and you need to understand that stop lamenting about yourself and rise up and ask him to help you and to give you the grace to keep going and that's really what i want you to understand something the lord really put on my heart concerning consecration that he just showed me that there's going to be a lot of people who watch this video who will say well you know i don't masturbate i don't necessarily do all the bad things that um, people necessarily consider so bad like stealing I don't really lie I mean I get good grades in school I do what my parents tell me to do I, I mean my spouse likes me my boyfriend my girlfriend likes me I have a lot of friends I'm popular like I think I'm a good person I think that everything that I'm doing is fine and I'm not really in this uh, not as worse as someone else right 
But Holy Spirit is emphasizing to me this self righteousness, and that's why we've lost consecration in the body of Christ. Mm. We've lost consecration in the body of Christ. Now, I'm not saying there's no one consecrated in the body of Christ, but I'm saying that a majority at the state of the body of Christ right now is not walking in consecration. It's true. It's not, they're not. And how do I know this? We don't see much power in the church like how we used to. We don't. We don't have Book of Acts power because we don't have Book of Acts consecration. We don't have Books of Acts power because we don't have Books of Acts consecration. So I'm going to move to the chapter of Ephesians 5. I'm going to read it in NLT. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes, these are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of the world. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey Him. Don't participate in the things these people do, for once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. For the light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully examine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. Mm. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So the Lord is really emphasizing to me, well, this entire, um, all the parts of what I just read is what the Lord is really emphasizing right now. And what he wanted to really communicate through you all is that to be able to live consecrated starts with your heart. Mm. You can't be consecrated if you don't consecrate your heart. Now people can say, well, you know, I could just stop doing this and that and I'm doing these things again out of because I want to change, which is great. But if you're trying to do these things just because you're trying to check a box and just trying to console yourself that you can do it, that you have the self-discipline to do this, not only are you walking as a Pharisee, but you're walking away from the Holy Spirit because you're not relying on him. This is why I love the Holy Spirit. This is what he does. The Holy Spirit. He's so precious. If you're like, right now, just say, I love you, Holy Spirit. Just say, I love you, Holy Spirit. I love, I love you, Holy Spirit. Spirit. I, I love you, Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. So what the Holy Spirit does is he takes that desire of sin away from your heart. So if you're, one, if you're trying to get away from drinking, if you're trying to get away from fornication, if you're trying to get away from lying, you have to go to God and really cry out to him. Because the Holy Spirit wants a humble person. The, the Bible says in the book of James that the, that the Lord gives grace to the humble, but he resists the prideful. You must receive grace from the Holy Spirit. Grace is what gives you the ability to be able to live a consecrated life. Without grace, you will be struggling. You need grace. You need grace. To, have, to be able to get grace, you have to come to the Lord with a humble heart. You have to allow Him to consecrate your heart. You cannot come to the Lord as just someone who just saying, well, you know, you have to come in faith. The Bible says that for first we must believe God and believe that He exists. You have to come, with him in faith, come to Him in faith and say, okay, Lord, well, I want to live for you, 
because I want to be able to fulfill the destiny that you have written about me. Mm. I want to live for you because I want to be able to make my life a pleasing aroma to you. We just read it within the first couple of verses in Ephesians 5 that when we live our lives like this, we are a pleasing aroma to God. Mm. There are different smells in the spirit. Are you smelly? <laughs> like, are you, <laughs> are you smelling in the spirit? Because I really don't want to smell. I don't. When we speak, when we pray to God, an incense goes up to Him. The Bible talks about this. When we pray, an incense goes up. And then the angels put their spices in it. And then the Lord receives the prayer. Now, if you're coming to God with bitterness and just complaining, like, why God? Why do you do this to me? Why don't you why don't you do these things for me, God? When did God become the servant and you became the master? You have to come to God in humility. Yeah. You have to come to God in humility. Because whether, I mean, just, I, the Lord is putting on my heart to share this small little testimony. Mm. And I know that Berto has a lot to share. Yeah. So we're, like, we're going to get into that. But like a short little testimony. So I was being petty, guys. I was being really petty with God. So I was having just a lot of frustration um, back in college. I had to take an exam. And I didn't do so well on it. And I was just like, you know what, God, because I didn't do well on this exam, and I prayed about it, and I came to you, and I really cried to you about it, and I thought I did everything that I could. <laughs> I did. I, I went to tutoring. Yeah. I went to office hours. I did absolutely everything, and I still failed this exam. You know what? Just to show to you that I'm mad at you, I'm listening to secular music. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just started listening to secular music. Some songs that I've listened to before um, when I didn't live a consecrated life. Because when I first came to Christ, uh, my life wasn't completely consecrated. And I'm still working in consecration now. But I just wanted to say, God, you know, screw whatever that, you know, you're doing. I just want you to know that I'm mad at you. Did that change anything? I came to God of pride, right? And it's one thing to come to God of pride to give it away. But one thing to come to him in pride and expecting him to listen to what you're saying. Now, in mercy, he can respond. But... After what I did, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, nothing changed. I mean, I still didn't do well in my exam. And now I'm over here with not having any peace in my heart, just feeling a lot of heaviness, feeling burdened, feeling bitter, feeling angry, feeling resentment towards the Lord. And now Satan's laughing at me because he's like, wow, she's worshiping me right now. She's giving me the praises I love to hear because I'm basically talking down on my creator and that's Satan's goal for our lives for us to reject God because he never wants us to see what he wants to what God wants to reveal through our lives so I just share that because what God is really putting on my heart about this is just that if you really want God to work on your heart whether it's unforgiveness malice pettiness and pettiness is huge talking about I'm gonna go ahead and show her who's who I'm gonna go ahead clap back that that's pettiness and it's become so it's, it's become so um, normalized in this in our generation right now even in the church like it's just so it people put pettiness on a pedestal as if it's showing that you are that person you know you are that person who can get what they need to get done like it, it's being glorified but that's really not a heart posture that you can go to God with and expect God to receive the prayers that you have. Mm. So if you want consecration in your life, you need to humble yourself. Let God be God and let you be a human. Were you, like, just look at the book of Job. Were you there from the beginning of time? I mean, I know I wasn't. Were you there when God formed the stars and the moon? Were you there when he played of Leviathan? You weren't. So you don't know what God can do. It's now true. God wants to help you. He wants to help you. Let the Holy Spirit marinate in your mind. Let him marinate. Spend time right now just asking the Lord. Even just pause this video. Pause this video. And then we're going to go into more in-depth teaching of the consecration. But just pause this video. And just say, Lord, I repent for just having malice in my heart, unforgiveness in my heart, for anger, for bitterness, for self-righteousness, 
for lust, for envy, for strife, jealousy. jealousy. The list goes on. Whatever you need to repent for, that you're holding on to in your heart. Because I'll tell you, the most difficult sins to deal with are the ones that you can't see. The ones that are deep in your heart. And you have to ask for the mercy of God to reveal to you what you need. Because the first thing you need, the first sign of someone that's having good spiritual health is that you know your problem. Now to even know your problem is a miracle at this point. Because the way a lot of people's hearts are, they don't even want to know what their problem is. And then to humble yourself to even hear what God has to tell you is your problem, then you can work on the solution. So just take this time. Thank you for just pausing the video. I really hope that the Lord had touched you in this time. Now I'm gonna let Bertold go ahead and continue this conversation with consecration. Right, well, thank you for taking that time. I know that the Lord definitely was moving and that, uh, you know, you're continuing in this video because the Lord wants you to finish this and there's more that he wants to share with you. Um, one thing that God really wanted me to share in another maybe teaching from what we've seen in Exodus already, we've seen that there's a relationship between consecration and the anointing. And one more thing that God wanted me to share was in the book of uh, Daniel. Wow. And there was, a, there was a case that happened. So to give a little bit of a background, right? So you know, everybody probably knows about Nebuchadnezzar. And if you don't know Nebuchadnezzar, he was the king of Babylon. And God basically used him to bring the Israelites in captivity because the Israelites were in rebellion. They weren't following the laws of God. They were like, oh, you know, life is good. We can do whatever we want. And God kept on sending prophets to tell them, you need to change your life. You need to repent. And they were like, nah, we're good. And then they got captured. And now they're in captivity in the land of Babylon. And when Nebuchadnezzar died, his son now came into power. And his son in this time, his name is Belshazzar. And Belshazzar, and we'll get into it in the book of Daniel chapter 5, we look at verse 1, he said, Many years later, King Belshazzar gave a great feast for a thousand of his nobles, and he drank wine with them. While Belshazzar was drinking the wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold, the silver cups that his predecessor, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. And we saw in Exodus 4, yeah. in the temple, when God was telling the Moses, anoint this, anoint this, anoint this, and consecrate them unto me. And you see Belshazzar, you know, he said, okay, bring the gold cups, bring the silver cups, you know, bring all the things from the temple. And he said he wanted to drink from them with his nobles, his wives, and his concubines. Verse 3 says, so they brought these gold cups taken from the temple, the house of God in Jerusalem, and the king of his nobles, his wives, his concubines, they drank from them. You see, pay attention, God is watching them doing this. And you see verse 4, verse 4 here says, while they drank. So you see, God was so angry that he didn't wait. He said, while they were drinking, they were partying, they were probably smoking and enjoying themselves. I mean, <laughs> a thousand nobles, and, they, you know, and they're drinking, and God, they said they were drinking, while they drank, from the, and they praised the idols made of gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Which to me still doesn't make sense, because how can they take items from the temple of God? which is consecrated to God. And then they're using these things to praise the gods of gold, the gods of silver, and the gods of brass and wood. So you can see how they're deterring the things of God yeah. to another God. And you see in verse 5, verse 5, this is one of the most scary things. I'm pretty sure they probably poop in their plants because it says <laughs> suddenly. Like imagine you're drinking. You know when you're doing something bad and you get caught? Like you said, this is suddenly. They saw the fingers of a human hand writing <laughs> on the plaster wall of the king's palace near the lampstand. And the king himself saw the hand as he wrote. And his face turned pale. I mean, pale means he almost probably died. Can you just like imagine that? Like, like I'm just like, he, like. He became pale and, just... and frightened. And you see that his knees knocked together in fear and his legs gave way beneath him. Like he was shaking. So verse 7 said, the king shouted for the enchanters, you see, the astrologers, the fortune tellers, 
to be brought before him. So it means that he has a council, but he has a demonic council. See, he has a council of people who can tap into the spirit. You might have gone to a fortune teller. You might have gone to a psychic. You see, the Bible makes it clear that this king, Belshazzar, when he was tripping, when he was scared, when the rain rode on the wall, he consulted mediums. And you might have consulted mediums in your life. And this is, this is a serious thing. And look at what happened. And see, he said to these wise men of Babylon, Whoever can read this writing and tell me what it means will be dressed in purple robes of royal honor and will have a gold chain placed around his neck. He will become the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Basically, I don't want to get into the whole thing because it's a great story. Please read the whole chapter. Um, I'm, I'm a paraphrase in certain things. But the main thing I really want to say is we just talked about consecration and this is a serious thing to God. And you can see how when they acted so foolishly in thinking the things of God and drinking from it. So they used the cups and the gold items, the silver items of God for something that was not glorifying God. Yeah. They used it for something that was not for the purposes of God. And God had already anointed it. Because when something is consecrated and the anointing of God is upon it, you can't touch it because God has placed his mark upon it. So you can't claim it because God has claimed it for his own, for his own use. And this is when, you know, it really shows again that consecration is not something to be taken lightly. Because you look in the book of Psalms, God says, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Because what God says that if you deal evil if you do evil to my prophet if you do evil to those that i have placed my oil i have placed my mark upon them and you want to do you want to do anyhow with them i will deal with you and this is a perfect clear example of what god did to this king who exalted himself and thinking that he can just do whatever he wants because you know this you know his concubines are there his wives are there you know he's just trying to probably show off like you know what 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 worse can happen you know we can do whatever we want and God had to humble him. And it wasn't until, the, if you keep reading, you will see that Daniel, who at this point actually had retired. Because Daniel actually served in the time of his father, which was in Nebuchadnezzar's time. And when Daniel was called, Daniel was able to interpret the writings. And when Daniel interpreted the writings for him, he wanted to give Daniel all the things he said, like the gold chains and all the things. Yeah. Daniel said, you can stay with it. I don't need none of that. And, but the reality is that the judgment of God came upon him. He died. This king, Belshazzar, died because he had to pay a price. So you, it's very important to understand that as much as God is love, God is also a judge. And you can't play with the things that God has consecrated for himself. You can't play with the things that God has put his mark upon and think that you can just enter and do whatever you want. I mean, look at the two sons of Aaron. The Bible says that they tried to, you know, give a strange fire and God killed them on the spot. Yeah. And Aaron couldn't say anything. Aaron couldn't, I mean, I could imagine as a dad, like he's just like, I mean, God, like really, like you couldn't have mercy on them. Like God was like, no, you can't, you can't act in my presence as if there's no principles. You don't present yourself before a holy God thinking that you can just act anyhow. So it was really something that God had to you know, show me like, this is really important, consecration. And when something is consecrated to God, don't joke with it, don't play with it, and don't use it for things that are not going to glorify God because God is watching you. And I promise you, he is watching you. And the time will come where that judgment will fall upon you if you don't repent. Because if you repent right now, of the things maybe you've been talking about, about saying oh they're false teachers they're false prophets he's a false man of god they're doing this they're doing that you should repent for that because god is going to bring this to you and he's going to remind you of what you have said and you don't need to say it out loud it can be in your heart many of you have unforgiveness towards people who you're watching online so you have to be very careful into guarding your heart, like you were saying, consecrating your heart into asking God for help to forgive. So one more thing really that um, the last point that God really wanted me to share here is in terms of consecration, we go to the book of Judges. And, you know, many people know this story. It's a very 
a famous story about Samson. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on it in terms of uh, teaching, but there's certain few things that God wanted me to share here. We look in Judges chapter 13, verse 2, and it says, In those days, a man named Manoah from the tribe of Dan lived in the town of Zorah. His wife was unable to become pregnant, and they had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to Manoah's wife and said, Even though you have been unable to have children, you will soon become pregnant and give birth to a son. And then now, think about it. The angel could have just stopped there, right? Be like, just soon you're going to have, you haven't been pregnant, soon you're going to have a son. Boom. But the angel continues. He says this, verse 4. So be careful, you must not drink wine or any alcoholic drink, nor eat any forbidden food. And then verse 5 says, you will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and his hair must never be cut, for he will be dedicated. You see, we keep bringing this consecration, he, this child, so we are realizing that you can dedicate almost anything. You can dedicate a child, you can dedicate objects, because we saw in the book of Daniel that they use the cops, you know, so... Children can be dedicated to God. Objects can be dedicated to God. Things can be dedicated to God. And not just the God that we serve, which is Jesus Christ, to other gods too. Yeah. And it's very important that we understand this because you don't want to mess up with the things that, uh, that God has placed his hand upon. And you see that the angel here continues by saying, for he will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth, and he will begin to rescue Israel from the Philistines. One of the main things that the Lord really wanted me to put as a point here was that, look at the restrictions that the angel had to tell Samson's mother. Because yeah. Samson's mother, after receiving that word from the angel, I mean, she can't drink no more. No strong drink, no alcoholic drink, and she can't drink and she can't eat any um, any food that is not part of the Levitical acceptable food that God gave in the time of Moses from the law. So it really shows she can't eat anything unclean, and you have to understand that consecration comes with a price. There is a price for it because you can't just think that it's gonna be cheap. You can't just think that God is going to use you and then you can just do whatever you want. No. Nope. So I'm trying to make you understand that there are specific instructions that God will start showing you and revealing to you as you start walking with him. Because there's going to be restrictions that you can't do. And you have to understand that despite the fact that other people may be able to do it, you have to know for yourself that you can do it. Because like you mentioned about music. I mean, many people will tell you, well, it's nothing bad. They're even talking about God. He says, you know, God is my lover. You know, I mean, there's many artists out here who claim to be Christian artists, like R&B, hip hop, you know, especially in the, the Christian community. Like, all these people are not living a consecrated life. They're not. And Christian music, just because they put Christian music as the title or the label or they call themselves a Christian. I mean, if I listen to your music and the Holy Spirit is not on it, that's not worship. That's self-glorification. If you're doing music, if you're an artist and you're listening right now, if your heart posture towards this is not consecrated, towards the music that you're presenting, it's not consecrated. Because your heart posture has to be, I want God to be glorified because I've humbled myself because I am a nobody and less of me so it can be more of him. Mm. But if it's more about how well my vocals are mm. or more about I want people to think I... Um, I'm, I'm so such, gifted. I'm, or I'm such a great lyricist, or however it is, then that music is not consecrated. And when people hear that, you transmit. Because as we speak right now, throughout this video, I'm not just speaking words, mm. I'm speaking spirit. Because my words are spiritual. Words are spiritual. Words are not just words. And Jesus words said are it. spiritual. You know, Jesus yeah. said, the words that I speak, they're spirit and life. You know, so it's just to show you that Amen. the words that people speak carry something. I mean, I remember you told me even people who are not even believers, they had an experiment and they had two different plants and they do an experiment for 30 days and you will see that they will be speaking good things to this plant and then they will be speaking bad things to this plant and then when they check after 30 days, they realize that the plant that they've been speaking curse words and evil words, it died. It died. Yeah, but it died. the other plant grows so strong, so what? Well because words carry power. I mean, why do you think that 
when you know maybe your friends and family tell you certain things you know you remember those evil things because words attach to you so definitely so this is you know this is really good, great things that god is um allowing us to share yeah and i'm really necessary we talked about like i was mentioning earlier about the um christian music mm. It really requires, for you to even know music is consecrated, you might be like, how do I even know this music is consecrated? You need to spend more time with God. And as you spend more time with God, you'll you'll be able to discern whether or not this is God or not. The more you spend time with someone, you know their voice. You know, you, you know the atmosphere, right? You know the atmosphere because you can listen to some music and it's called, and it's labeled as Christian, but you feel like you can do things in your own strength afterward. Right? And then some people might label it as, oh, this music is just encouraging, but really it's promoting you to glorify yourself and have pride. Be like, wait, but no, that you're overthinking it. Well, I mean, if mu the whole purpose of worship is to give glory to God, if now you feel like you can do things in your own strength because you heard this song, that song is not for God. Yeah. And, I, and I keep on going back to this self glorification, self rightness, because I just feel that this is something really as deep rooted thing in the church right now mm. because it's so connected to the spirit of religion yes, yes yes and what the lord has called us to do with these platforms is to challenge people yeah. to think to think challenge people to think outside of the religious box that a lot of churches have put them in it's true so definitely um I, i'm a hundred percent on what you're saying i still wanted to I think there was one more thing just to add from what you were saying um the importance of being able to discern you know one thing that in the times that we're heading right now discernment is critical discernment is very critical in the time that we're getting in right now because everybody's claiming to know god everybody's claiming things but jesus made it clear you will know a tree by its fruit by its fruit and many people don't take the time to check people out. They don't. They don't. Like, just because someone just gave a nice word or someone, you know, did something and you kind of just go off from, you know, how you felt then you think that, oh, that person is a valid, you know, person to just follow. But there's much more to that because you need to understand that there's much more intricate things that God looks into and you need to be more diligent to taking that time in being careful in what you hear and what you see so that you can be able to consecrate yourself to be used for God. Amen. So now I just really want to pray um, for, the, for the people because I know that you've heard, you might be listening, be like, man, you know, I've heard all these things, you know, God help me. I want to be consecrated. I want to change. And we just want to pray that God will give you that supernatural grace to kill those desires inside of you so that you just it just feels so natural to move on. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. There's grace and it's available. So I just want to say thank you for coming this far into the video. And now the Lord just is wanting us to pray for you guys so that you can be able to receive what God has for you. Because I know that there has been a lot of information that has been shared. There's been, I just know that God will, wants us to pray for you so that you can not be overwhelmed with what is happening. So let's pray. So Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, for everyone watching that every single word that was spoken, that it will go deep inside of their hearts that the enemy will not steal the words that you have ingrained in their hearts, the seed that you're trying to grow. And I pray, Lord, that you will guard it and that you will give them the grace to guard it. I pray against every spirit of fear, every spirit of worry, every spirit of anxiety that will try to creep in and doubt that will try to make you think that you can't do it. Yes, you cannot do it, but you can do it in the strength of the Lord because in yourself, there is no confidence. The Bible makes it clear that the flesh profits nothing. So I just pray right now, Lord, that you will give them a supernatural grace, that you will increase the measure of your spirit, that you will pour out your spirit and give them the grace to forgive, 
the grace to be able to move on from the things that they have in their lives. And I pray in the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. 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 Thank you so much for tuning in today and joining us for prayer. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and share this video and our other platforms so that the gospel can be reached to the youth and the rest of the nations. Amen. See, See you, you next time. time.